Hi, Gwen Fox here, artist, teacher, and art coach. Got a question for you. Have you ever gone into the studio and you're painting and halfway through, you stop? Now, you know the painting's not done, but you were afraid to paint more because you were afraid you would ruin it and all those hours of work. Plus, guess what? There was a colorful area on the left-hand side of your painting that that color transition you absolutely loved and you wanted to protect it. Or perhaps this happened. Your painting has come to a place where you don't know what to do, but you decide to keep going in hopes something miraculous will happen and it'll show you the way to finish the painting. Then you keep adding color to the point that, guess what, you've got a Frankenstein painting. Colors that don't belong at all, but, but, but you put there in hopes of resurrecting the painting. And guess what? You just ruined the painting. You know this, it's happened. It's happened to me. Both of these scenarios have happened to me, and I vivid, vividly remember the frustration and the pain. It's one of those sick feelings that in the pit of your stomach that you just never forget. If this has happened to you, there are a couple of reasons why. Most artists look at artists they admire. Those that win awards, artists that are in galleries, and they compare their art to, to the art that they are, they are painting. Then they try to paint how that artist paints, which drowns out their unique artistic view. Now, artists also fall in the trap to think that they can command creativity on demand. But this is far from the truth. Creativity is a muscle that needs to be strengthened every day. Plus, most artists are completely disconnected from their work. What? You're saying? Well, let me tell you. By this, I mean they don't look at, their, at the paintings that are unsuccessful and see this as a chance to learn and discover their unique pull. Now, this unique pull is what sets you apart from every other artist. Now, because I've struggled myself with these issues, plus after coaching tons of artists who are now in shows, they're in galleries, I've got some ideas to help. First of all, are you doing these five things before dipping your brush into the paint. Number one, are you clear on your design? Do you know where your center of interest is going to be? And what do you want your painting to say? Yes, it does have a voice. Have you decided on your color palette? And do you know what mood you want the painting to reflect? Now, these are the five things to do before you start painting. But what do you do when you're in the middle of the painting and you don't know what to do? So you stop because you don't know what to do or you keep going. It doesn't matter. Both are they both keep you from finishing the painting. So here are the questions that I personally ask myself when I get into trouble. Let me tell you, I get into trouble a lot. And I tell my students to ask these very same questions when they reach that point of indecision. Is my design solid? What is my color palette? Is it warm? Is it cool? Have I limited my selection of colors to no more than five colors? Now, black and white are free. Now, I can hear you saying, only five colors. Let me tell you, artist Kim Eisner uses one color in her beautiful paintings. She has become an expert at this, and her paintings are fantastic. Now, of course, black and white are free with her one color. The other question is, what mood is my painting going to project? With this in mind, there is one more very important thing I want you to do. 
I want you to select three words you want your painting to project. Now, the next thing I want you to do is to put these three words on your table, if you're painting with paper and flat, or on your easel so that you can see these three words while you're painting. Now, let me give you an example of why I do this. I had a commission to paint a 48 by 60 oil painting of a lion. Now, since I had never done a lion before, uh, I had to really think about this. So I decided, number one, what did I want the lion to project? So the three words that I selected were strength, intelligence, and kindness. Now, this kept me focused during the painting. And in the end, the painting was a clear success. And the eyes of the lion transmitted strength, intelligence, intelligence and kindness. Understanding the before you start your painting questions and then the questions to ask when it is unclear the direction your painting wants to go will definitely help your frustration level. Plus, and I like this, it gives me a sense of control. And I like some control, at least in my paintings. Be sure and leave your comments below because I hope this is helping. And I will answer all your questions. So I look forward to getting them. And until next time, we'll see you then. Thank you.